Hi ACS, thanks for hopping on with us today. We're gonna do another lab for you guys. And today, on this Friday, we're gonna do a dissection today. So if you love dissections, you'll enjoy this. This was a lab that um, we were supposed to do with eighth grade this year. This is kind of the special um, eighth grade dissection because it's a really big one. So instead of just missing this opportunity, we thought it would be really fun to kind of bring you guys into the lab for this today and we can just do it together. So today we're going to do frog dissections. I have two different specimens that we're going to be using today. Um, so that's the plan. That's the game plan. So while you guys are hopping on, I'll just reiterate we're doing a uh, frog dissection today. I've got a couple different specimens ready for us and I'm just going to kind of walk you through what we do in middle school science, um, some of the different organs that we look for and give you a close-up view um, without the mess of what these guys look like inside. So I'm pretty stoked. I'm pretty excited. Frogs are super cool and this is a really fun dissection that um, you will get to do either in middle school or high school. So I'm glad you guys are hopping on. You think we're ready, Mr. Reeves? Ready to jump in? All right, I'm gonna bring you guys a little bit closer so you can see the game plan here. So we've got a couple different tools to the side here. Um, there's a couple different types of scissors that allow me to cut into our specimen. We've got a ruler that helps you guys kind of understand the scale of our specimens. We have a probe which is essentially just a little pokey tool that I can use to, to point to things or pick up things. We have a scalpel, which is very sharp. This is a blade, all right? So there's a little scalpel. And tweezers are always handy. We also have what's called T-pins. They look like this. And they're in the shape of a T. They're essentially just little pokey pins that we can use to peel back specimens and kind of hold them open. So we're gonna use a little bit of those. Of course, I have my gloves, I have some eye protection, and uh, here's our specimens. So these are our two frogs. I ordered these from a lab supply company called Carolina Biological Supply. So I did not go out and hunt these and get them myself. These are special specimens that were ordered for from a special website. Some of you might have noticed that there's a strange blue color. And this is not natural. I'll go ahead and just tell you that these specimens have been injected with dye, a special type of dye. So after they were already killed, they were inserted with a special type of dye that just allows you to see certain body systems a little bit easier. So hopefully um, some of the blood vessels and things like that will stand out a little bit more to you with the dye than you would be able to see if you were just cutting one of these guys open without that added. So some of those funky colors, just um, be aware that's not natural. That's added for scientists to be able to distinguish features a little bit easier. Okay, I'm glad to see people are hopping on. Um, I've been looking forward to this all week, so I'm glad you guys are joining me. Um, I'm hoping I've got a bunch of my eighth graders on. I miss you guys. We were supposed to do this together, but I'm glad we can at least do it virtually. So let's go ahead and start with this frog specimen. He is um, exposing his dorsal side currently, but we're going to go ahead and flip him over to the ventricle side. This is where we're going to be making our incisions. We'll be able to access the organs a little bit easier that way. So this is his ventral side. But before we do that, flip him back over to dorsal. I wanna show you some of his external features. And I'm saying it's a him, just because that's my guess. I'll be able to tell you for sure once we cut it open. But the reason I think it's probably a male is because of his um, kind of bigger finger or thumb right here. Typically male frogs have bigger thumbs. Um, and he's also just bigger in size, which kind of makes me think it's probably a mature male, but those, those bigger thumbs are really my hint as to why I think it might be <clears throat> a male. The reason that they have these bigger thumbs is simply for mating reasons. It allows the males to um, hold on to the females a little bit easier when they fertilize the eggs. 
So I'm thinking it's a male, but we'll see for sure uh, once we cut him open. All right, so some cool things about frogs. He's been squished in a bag for a while, so he's kind of, he's kind of squished. But in this area here are his eyes. They're kind of closed and smushed down. And then right behind his eyes, there's kind of this smooth circular patch, which is actually the tympanic membrane. So this is kind of like his little frog ear. And he has a pair of those, just like we have two ears. And then you can see his eyes, of course, a pair of those. And then he has his little nostrils down at the end. Frogs have these really cool, um, these really cool layers of tissue that are over their eyes that kind of act like goggles. And I can't really expose him to show you just because he's so smushed. But in there where his eyeball actually is, there's a very thin, clear piece of tissue that actually acts like little froggy goggles. So when these guys are in the water, or if they're in an area where they wanna protect their eyes, they can still see through it, but it's this thin piece of tissue that kind of protects their eyes. That's a really cool thing that frogs have. So it's kind of just tucked under there by his little eyeball. It's pretty cool. Let's see if we can open up his mouth because if you know anything about frogs, you know that frog tongues are very unique. If you've seen frogs in cartoons, you've probably seen that they have these long tongues. So I wanna try to show you his tongue, if I can get his mouth open. He's pretty stiff. Okay, that's better than it was. So you can kind of peek in there, right? This is his mouth. And inside that little fleshy piece that you can see, that's his tongue. Let me pry him open a little bit more to see if I could actually show you. So frog tongues are actually attached to the front of their mouth. They're not anchored in the back, they're, they're anchored towards the front of the mouth. And that's so that the little tongue can flip out towards its prey, which is what I'm trying to kind of show you here. So here's his tongue, and it actually is anchored here towards the front of the mouth, right? This is the top. And it can actually, there we go, flip out frontwards. Look at that froggy tongue. So it's anchored here at the front and this whole thing flips out this way to grab its prey. And then it flips backward towards the back of the mouth so that the prey goes straight down the esophagus. So I'll show you one more time. This is where the tongue is anchored towards the front. And then the whole thing flips out this way, grabs its prey, and then goes gulp, goes straight back into the mouth. Pretty cool. It's a pretty big tongue. It's a strong muscle. Frogs rely heavily on their tongue for capturing their prey. So it's really important that this muscle is really strong and works quickly, efficiently, works really fast. So we'll tuck his little tongue back in there. Okay, let's go ahead and jump into this frog and see what we got. Now, this incision that's, that you see has already been made for me because the supply company has injected these guys with dye so we can see them. But it's a really cool view to see the little muscle that's just underneath the skin. I'm gonna cut some of this skin away so you can see it a little bit better. 
So this is just skin here that I'm peeling back. And cut underneath their armpit there. You wanna be really careful when you're doing a dissection, especially if you're working with a partner because you're using very sharp tools. You wanna to cut away from yourself. You wanna cut away from your partner. You wanna be really careful. So this is just skin I'm moving. And then under here, what we have is essentially like a little frog six pack. So these are muscles and you can kind of see, it almost looks like he has abs because this is a rectus abdominis, which is essentially what you think of when you think of really strong stomach muscles. And that's exactly what this is, really thick muscle. So what I'm gonna do now is actually cut some of that away I'm gonna start from the top. It depends on the size of frog you have, but typically this muscle is pretty thick. My frog seems to be pretty mature, pretty big. So it's, it's fairly thick muscle. I'm gonna cut all the way down. I'm just gonna cut it away, kind of like a little window, so I can show you the cool organs inside. This is not very hard to cut through. I'm just trying to be really careful because there's lots of organs. We don't want to mess those up before we get to look at them and check them out. Now, typically, if I was using a specimen that was, it was becoming difficult to, to hold these flaps back, that's when I could use my T-pins. But this is actually opening really, really nicely for me. So I'm not even gonna use those tools today. I'm just gonna let it kind of fall open. So let's check out our little frog here. Let me grab my probe. The first thing you see is a lot, um, but usually the first thing you'll come into contact with is this dark structure here. And this is actually the frog's liver. Frogs have three lobes to their liver. So here's the first, the second is here, and then the third. And when you're looking at um, anatomy specimens or even pictures, when you're referring to the right or the left of your specimen, you refer to the right or the left as it would, as it would be for, in this case, the frog. So for example, um, this frog, his right hand is here and his left hand is here. So in this case, this would be the right lobe of the liver and then the two left lobes. This little pink structure at the very top is the heart. It's the little frog heart. We'll expose that more in just a minute. And then there's a lot of other stuff going on. So let me kind of pull these out. These are, these funky finger-like structures that you see are specific to frogs. Now, some of you might think, ooh, those are the intestines, but they're actually not. All these little finger-like Projections here are called fat bodies. They're called fat bodies. And this is how frogs store their fat. So instead of storing fat throughout their whole body like humans do, fra frogs actually store their fat in this type of structure. So you can see we have a pretty healthy frog. I've seen frogs that have much smaller fat bodies than we, we see here. So this is a pretty healthy frog. Seems like he had a good diet. Let's move our liver out of the way and see what we got underneath. This structure here, this guy, is the stomach. Feels pretty firm, there might be something in there. So here's the stomach. And then if you just follow along, it's attached to our intestine or intestine. So if we move some of these fat bodies out of the way, 
you can see the smoother kind of squiggly shape, that's the intestine. So it goes from the stomach to the small intestine. And then way down underneath, we would find the large intestine, which looks like it kind of starts way down there. Let's jump back up here and check out the heart a little bit more. Now the incision that I just made was a little bit tougher because there's a little bit of bone there. It's kind of like a little frog sternum, although they don't have rib cages, so it's a little bit different. So hopefully you got a good view. That little pink structure right there, right by my thumb, that's the heart. Frogs have a three-chambered heart. Unlike humans, we have four. So their heart is a little bit different than ours, but works similarly. It works similarly, but it's a little bit structurally different. This is just the little cavity that the heart stays in. It kind of looks like a little spider web structure. That's the little housing for the heart. And again, our big liver, the big dark structure. The stomach intestine swivels all down and then all of this of course is our fat body uh, this little thin structure it kind of looks like a deflated balloon that's the bladder that's the little frog bladder let's see what's underneath here because while i was yes okay so while i was looking i found this type of gray organ. This is actually the ovaries. So this frog is a female, despite my guess. I was thinking the larger thumbs might mean it's a male, but I'm mistaken. I'm actually wrong. You really can't know until you get in here and you find the gonads to really determine the, the gender of your specimen. So all this gray stuff is going to be the ovaries that produce the frog eggs. And um, it's kind of speckled because that's all the follicles from the ovaries that produce, frogs make a lot of eggs. So the females need really strong ovaries to make all those little froggy eggs. And they have a pair of those. So if you flip over to the other side, work our way around our intestines, you'll see the other, the other set of ovaries here. It's that gray, gray type matter. So this is what's actually gonna be producing the little frog eggs. And the way that frogs reproduce is the male, or excuse me, the female frog will produce frog eggs from the ovary and she'll actually lay them in the water. And the eggs are not fertilized internally. She will actually lay them and then the male frog will fertilize uh, the little eggs. But in order to make sure that the eggs are fertilized, typically you'll see a male frog actually hang out around a female frog or he'll um, be attached to her back and then they can uh, fertilize those little eggs right when the female lays them. And frogs can be fairly parental. Um, a lot of animals will produce their offspring and then kind of desert them, but frogs and it depends on the species, but a lot of frogs will either lay their eggs and kind of hang out, hang out in the area where the eggs are to kind of keep watch and guard them uh, to prevent other animals from eating the eggs. Or um, some frogs will even carry the eggs on their back. So female frogs can actually be pretty parental and take care of their offspring. So this is a female. So let's kind of jump back for those of you that are just hopping on. This is our frog dissection. Uh, we first thought it might be a male frog because of the larger um, thumb type finger appendages that this guy has, but we soon found out that it's actually a female because of the ovaries. We found the ovaries. But in general, all frogs, regardless of gender, they're gonna of course have a heart, which is here. 
that little pink kind of jelly bean type structure is the heart. It's a three chambered heart. Three chambered heart. This large dark organ that you first see when you cut into a frog is the liver. And it's a three lobed liver, pretty large, takes up a lot of the internal cavity. When you remove that liver, you see the stomach here. Let me turn it so you can see a little bit of a different angle. So there's the stomach. It's pretty large, you can see compared to the size of my fingers. And it's pretty stiff, it actually feels like there's something inside of it. So that's the stomach. It connects to the small intestine. And then if you traveled and traced it all the way through, you would come way down here to the large intestine. Here's our little frog bladder. It's empty, there's nothing in there. And then all these other crazy appendages that you see, they're kind of finger-like. These are called fat bodies, and this is how frogs store their fat. So instead of storing it in their legs or in their torso, they actually store their fat in these organs called fat bodies. So this is a pretty decently sized frog. It seemed healthy, it seemed like it had an abundance of food because it does have pretty large fat bodies. Another reason that makes sense now that we know that it's a female is because she is so large and she's very mature. Um, her ovaries seem pretty large as well. Um, she was storing fat um, as a response to trying to, you know, be the healthiest that she can be to take care of her young. So that, that makes sense that she's a pretty mature female and she has quite a lot of fat bodies. So she was she was a healthy mama that was either, you know, going to lay some eggs or had already laid eggs. These are the ovaries, the special organ that would have produced that. Now frogs breathe in a really cool way. So I want to make sure I tell you this before I forget. Frogs actually do have lungs. So if we hop back up here, Hopefully you can see, this is our liver by my thumb, but underneath here, this is one of our lungs. Seems pretty small. So that's one frog lung. Let's jump over to the other side because we do have a pair, just like humans. So here's the other lung tucked in there in the shadows. There's the other lung. Frogs can breathe that way through their lungs. They can also breathe through their skin, which is really cool. Frogs have the ability to take in that oxygen from either the water that they're in or just their surrounding environment. They can take in that oxygen through their skin and it enters their bloodstream that way, or they can breathe really similarly to how humans or other animals do, which is through their, their lungs. So they do have nostrils where they can take in breaths and that air can enter their lungs, which then puts oxygen into their bloodstream, but they can do it both ways. So they can breathe through their skin and they can breathe through their lungs. That oxygen goes to all the cells in the body, so it supports every structure of the frog. Every cell needs that oxygen to perform what's called cellular respiration. And that's just how our cells function and survive and operate. We need that oxygen for our cells, and then what's produced is a waste product called carbon dioxide, which is a different type of gas. And that gas also travels in our bloodstream, but it's gonna go back to either the skin or the lungs where it can be exhaled, just kind of like how humans do. We want the oxygen, but we release the carbon dioxide. There is a pancreas in here somewhere. There's also a spleen. So let's see if we can find anything else. And I know my eighth graders have a Zoom meeting with the fabulous Mrs. Brown. So if you guys need to hop off and go to that, feel free. I'm so glad you, you joined me today, but I'm gonna keep going just for our other students that wanna check out um, some more of our frog, but thank you guys for joining us. I was gonna see if I could find the spleen. It's usually a little tiny dark jelly bean. It's usually very small. All these fat bodies just fill up 
the space big time. You can kind of see the cool dye that I was talking about earlier. So this like pink and all this bright blue, that's not natural, frogs don't actually look like that, but that's that special dye that the, the biological supply company added for us so we can see a little bit better. Here's the stomach again. Let's take it out and see if there's anything inside. So I'm gonna safely, gently cut out our frog stomach here. Now that we've had a good look, we can take this guy apart a little bit. Safely cut away that tissue. So here's our frog stomach. It had a good blood supply to it. You can see the bright pink and blue blood vessels. This is a really cool view too. You can see that strong muscle. Our stomach and frog stomachs not only hold the food, but it also helps in digestion because our stomach can contract to actually help in that mechanical digestion. So even though we've swallowed food, right, and it's entered our stomach, <clears throat> our stomach is made to continue helping us uh, break down that food it helps if you chew your food really well, but your stomach helps a little bit further. So you can kind of see those strong muscle. Let's go ahead and cut this guy and see, if, see what's inside. So I'm being really, really careful. Going really slow. Making sure I'm not cutting my lab partner. Very cool. I hope my seventh graders are watching because we've been studying the human body. And this is an awesome view of what a stomach looks like. It's very rigid. There's some leftover food in here from this poor frog's last supper. But you can see all these ridges that help grind that food up. Frogs don't have a bunch of teeth like we do. They have a little bit of teeth, mostly just so that they can grab onto their prey and hold on to it. But most of that mechanical digestion that's gonna happen actually happens in the stomach. So all those tough ridges kind of act like a grinding mechanism to grind up that food a little bit more. So that's what the frog stomach looks like on the inside. The food would enter here and then it would go down this way into the small intestine. Then it would make its way to the large intestine. And then of course the waste would exit the body. The liver of our frog is what's gonna produce bile. And bile is a really special substance that helps the frog's body break down fat. So the things that it's eating um, that contain fat the liver is going to produce the bile and then it's actually going to be stored in the gallbladder which is another really small organ that i haven't been able to find yet actually it might be this guy right here that little dark structure that might be our gallbladder so the liver produces the bile the bile is stored in the gallbladder and then our stomach was just down here and the bile is mixed in with the food after the stomach has kind of churned it up a little bit more. All right, so I'm gonna hop over to this frog. I was thinking this one might be our female, but we know our first one was a female. But let's cut this one open to see if there's any differences we might have between our two specimens. So of course, this is our dorsal side, right? We have the head with the two eyes, we have a pair of eyes. I was telling everybody at the beginning that frogs have a really special membrane on their eyes that act like goggles. So you kind of see their eye underneath this flap here. They've been smushed in a bag, so they're kind of smushed, but there's a really cool layer of tissue that goes over their eyes and acts like a goggle. 
So these guys can swim around and still see and keep their eyes open. This really flat circular structure that you can kind of see, that little flat structure, that's the frog's ear. So this is the tympanic membrane. You can think of it really similar to our own eardrum. So it's a really fragile little piece of skin that acts like an eardrum. And of course there's a pair of those. If you guys are just jumping on, let me see if I can show you the cool frog tongue. So frogs have a really special tongue that's anchored in the front of their mouth. So it's anchored here. And it actually flips out, if I can get it, it flips out forward to catch their prey. So it flips out from the back of the mouth and goes this way to catch their prey. It's a really strong, thick muscle. You could see it was hard for me to even get it out. It's kind of textured and it has this, this kind of pronged structure, but it flips out this way from the mouth, anchored at the front, and catches their prey, flips back into the mouth so that the prey goes straight down their esophagus into their stomach. That way the frog doesn't, doesn't risk losing their prey so they can get a good meal little froggy tongue. All right, we're on our ventricle side here. There has already been an incision for our skin, but we're just gonna do what we did on our other frog. If there's some people kind of hopping on late, they wanna check it out, what we did earlier. We're gonna cut away this skin. Just being really careful. This right here is all muscle which we will eventually cut away. So we're gonna cut all the skin. There's some tissue kind of holding the skin to the muscle, so I'm just gonna gently nip that away. And what you see is strong frog muscle. This is essentially like a frog six pack. You can even kind of see the structure similar to how human stomach muscles look. This is called the rectus abdominis, which is essentially the abs. So this is really strong muscle for a frog. But in order to see the organs, we're gonna cut that away. So I'm gonna stick my scissors just underneath the muscle here, being careful not to cut my organs that are underneath. And we're gonna cut that away. Kind of open it up. All right, so for all my young scientists, I'm gonna quiz you a little bit. Are you ready? I know I can't hear you, but see if you can quiz yourself, all right? So we just cut away the skin and the muscle, right? See if you can tell somebody around you what this structure was. This dark, big structure. What was that called? It has three lobes. It produces bile. If you guess the liver, you are correct. This is our frog liver. Good job. Who remembers, see if you can guess, what this structure was right up here. It's like a pink small structure towards the top of the liver. This organ has three chambers, whereas humans would have four. If you guess the heart, you're correct. That's our little froggy heart, three-chambered heart, and then our liver. Okay, let's see what else I could quiz you on. If you lift up the liver, we find all these finger-like projections. They look kind of crazy, and they're all tucked in here. So all these, what were these called? What was their name? And see if you can remember their function. What's the function of these guys? 
What are they gonna actually do for the frog? I'll give you a hint. It doesn't matter the gender of the frog. All frogs are gonna have these. And your other hint is that humans do not have these. We do not have these in our body. These are called fat bodies. If you guess that, you're correct. And if you guess the function being that it stores fat for the frog, you would also be correct. So our bodies store fat evenly throughout our whole body, right? But frogs actually store their fat in this structure called fat bodies. So this frog seemed to be pretty healthy too. Okay, this is interesting. Look right here, there's kind of a gray speckledy structure. This is cool. This tells me the gender of my frog. See if you can remember. This gray structure would belong to either a male or a female. See if you can remember. Male or female frogs. There's a pair of them, right? Those little speckled dots that you see on it are follicles, which means it would be a female frog because this is the frog's ovaries. So we've got two females today. I was hoping we'd have one male, one female, but we've got two ladies today, two female frogs. They both have ovaries. They're both female. Good job. All right, what about this structure up here? It's kind of a balloon shaped, kind of crescent, half moon shape. Feels kind of, kind of stiff. That would be the frog's stomach stomach and then the stomach is attached to this spaghetti like organ down here which of course is our small intestine and leads to our large intestine towards the end the intestines are going to help the frog to continue to absorb nutrients and break down their food to absorb all the yummy nutrients from their diet and then this little flimsy structure down here is the froggy bladder so there's nothing much in there but that is the little froggy bladder the only other thing we haven't been able to find today is the pancreas those for some reason they can be a little tricky to find they're kind of wrinkly it's near the stomach but i don't see it here is our gallbladder, that little dark structure there. It's gonna store bile for us, for the frog. Fat bodies, our lungs are tucked in underneath. There's one lung, and then there's another one on the other side. So the, they, do have, uh, they do have a pancreas that's in here somewhere. I'm just not sure where it is. And all this dye that you see, that pink and blue, that's not natural, that's been injected so that it allows us to see structures a little bit easier. Am I missing anything? We did our lungs. The spleen is in here somewhere. I think the spleen might be, I saw it a minute ago. The spleen is a really, really small little bean shape. I believe that's our spleen. There's kidneys in here too. I forgot to mention that on the first one. So here's our kidney, one of them. And then they have a pair, so there's another one on the other side. So the kidney is down here toward the towards the base of the frog near the bladder because kidneys are gonna help filter water and filter out waste from the frog's body. And the fluid that's filtered through the kidneys goes to the bladder as urine. And our body works the same way. So we have two kidneys that help cleanse our body 
and specifically they help cleanse out the fluid in our body that um, eventually produces urine and urine is just a waste product. Um, our body doesn't use that so we just get rid of it because we don't need it. This fluid that's in the cavity could could just be natural fluid from the frog, but these frogs have also been treated with a special type of chemical that helps protect me as I'm dissecting it and it helps protect the students when, when we dissect it together called formaldehyde. So if you were in the lab with me right now, you would smell not a very strong smell, but you can smell a little bit of a chemical smell and that's called formaldehyde. So this is probably a mixture of just um, moisture from the frog itself and maybe a little bit of formaldehyde. I think we have hit most of the highlights here of our frogs. The only other thing I could think of to show you before I let you go is I could show you some muscles. So this can kind of be our last thing. Let me show you some of these frog muscles. Some people eat frog legs. I have never done it. I have no desire to do it, but some people love to eat frog legs and that's because frogs have pretty strong muscles in their legs. So let me show you some of that. So I'm just gently cutting away some of their skin. Anybody remember what's special about frog skin? It not only protects their body, but what else does it do? It also allows frogs to breathe. They can breathe through their skin. They have lungs that work and operate, but they can also obtain oxygen through their skin too. Look at these beautiful muscles. They're just kind of a light peachy color. Really strong thigh muscles. Here's the little frog knee, so the joint where the muscles can move. Look at this calf muscle. He, he definitely, or she, excuse me, she never missed calf day. Look at that strong muscle. Muscles work in pairs. My seventh graders know this. Muscles work in pairs. Muscles always contract. If you're using a muscle, you're contracting it. If you're not using a muscle, it's gonna be relaxing. So in order for a frog to go from this position to this position, you would need one of the pairs of muscles to actually contract, all right? So if we're straight like this, but then the frog moves to this position, which one of these muscles on this side of the leg or this side do you think is gonna actually be contracting? So it would go from this way to this way. Now remember, muscles contract, right? So it would actually be this muscle here that would have to be contracting and pulling, pulling on the joint to bring the rest of the leg closer this way, while this muscle would need to be relaxing because they work as a pair this one would have to be relaxing in order for this to stretch all the way over. And it just works the opposite way if the frog wants to go from this position to from here to here. Now this muscle is gonna be relaxing while this muscle is what's gonna be tightening and contracting to allow for that movement to happen. We have a flexor and extender muscle pairs that work together. Muscles either contract or relax and they always work in pairs. It's a really strong frog, really strong muscles. All right, you guys, um, I think that's about it. Um, thank you for joining me for making a big mess in the lab. My hands are super slimy. I'm gonna have to wash my lab coat later. Um, I definitely have a big mess to clean up, but I'm so glad you hopped on with me to watch this frog dissection. Uh, shout out to Mr. Reeves, who's my awesome cameraman. He's so patient. Um, 
this is what this is what he signed up for right when he married a science teacher so thank you guys so much feel free to leave me a bunch of questions if you want to um, after I clean up, I'm going to go back and read some of your awesome comments, but love you guys. Have a great spring break next week, and we'll see you 